Hi, and welcome to Conversations with Robin. On today's program, we have Howard Martin from HeartMath. Howard is out here from the United States. And when I asked him earlier about how to introduce him, <laughs> what was your tongue-in-cheek answer? <laughs> well, first of all, let me say I'm really it's a pleasure to be with you here tonight, and I'm really glad to be back in Australia. It's actually one of my favorite places to, to come to. But in our pre-interview, I was just playing with you. You yeah. asked me you know, what my title was, and I said I was the president of the International Association of Good-Looking Short Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Which took me totally by surprise. But I think you know, you, you could go for a higher acclaim, couldn't you? I mean, Probably, it's a yes. Good, it's a very good um, description about yourself, I think. I'm sure your wife would agree. I was hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, what, uh, what is your title with HeartMath? Tit my title is Executive Vice President of HeartMath. Okay. And, and just in um, uh, a snapshot description of HeartMath, that's sort of in layman's terms, what is HeartMath? Well, the HeartMath system is a system made up of, of techniques, mm -hmm. of very interesting innovative concepts, and new technology, all designed to provide uh, new levels of intelligence and empowerment for individuals and organizations. Okay. Now, I know HeartMath has been going for 25? Actually, officially 17 years, but the work that led up to HeartMath now goes back over 30 years. Okay, because you got involved, well, with the the pre-work with HeartMath when you were about 21, didn't That's you? That's right. Uh, HeartMath was founded by a man named Doc Childry. Mm -hmm. And Doc has been my friend for now over 35 years. We met both when we were young men back in the, the South in the United States, uh, back in North Carolina. Okay. I know um, a number of years back, science had discovered that the heart had its own brain. Is that correct? Well, yes, the heart has a very complex nervous system. Mm -hmm. It's studied through the field of what's called neurocardiology. And it's a very complex nervous system that communicates with the big brain in the head. And it's made up of support cells and neurons and, you know, lots of, of components that give it a very sophisticated, uh, you know, uh, nervous system um, component in our, in our body. What's interesting is that that information travels up through the, through the body, up into the brain. It goes through the, the lower centers of the brain, right through the emotional centers, and then terminates right here in our thinking centers in the neocortex. And what's interesting about it as well is that when you map out the neurological traffic in the body, it's easy to see that the heart actually is sending more information to the brain than it's receiving from the brain. Receiving more than it's sending. It's sending more to the brain than it's receiving. It's sending more than it's receiving. When, roughly when did they discover this? Well, I think the early, earliest was in the, in the 70s. You know, the work of John and Beatrice Lacey and others were indicating that the heart uh, had a sort of an intelligence. You know, in, in their studies, they found that, you know, the, the signals from the brain were, were supposed to produce a certain, you know, response in the heart, but that the heart didn't respond that way. It acted as if it had a mind of its own. This became intriguing to researchers, and they began to sort of map out how does the heart actually communicate with the brain and the rest of the body. And today they know that there's four definitive ways that the heart does in fact communicate with the brain and the rest of the body. Now, this research has been around a long time. I think one of HeartMath's contributions, we brought that research to the forefront. We did our own research. We found researchers around the world working in this field and we were able to really popularize it, the understanding that the heart is more than a blood pump. Okay, and how has this information and this research changed how we look at ourselves as human beings? Well, I think, you know, the brain gets credit for everything, you know, I mean, and, and it's true that the brain is an obviously very important part of who we are. And we, we see images in, in the brain, we get thoughts in the brain, and, you know, those things indicate that that's where all intelligence lies. But I think that the paradigm shift is that it's not the only source of intelligence we have. And, uh, for example, we know that brain function is critically dependent upon those signals coming from the heart. So the heart is a major contributor to what actually happens in the brain. Mm -hmm. Taken further, we've been doing research in recent years showing you know, that the heart actually responds uh, to external uh, events and perceptions faster than the brain does, before the brain actually does. This, so this leads us to understand that you know, uh, all that's been said met metaphorically, the thousands of years of references to the heart may in fact be very true that the heart is a source of wisdom, it's a source of courage, it's a source of our higher qualities, our higher values. It's linked to the emotions that have the most uh, benefit for us, the ones that feel best to us. All of this is, is now being proven by science to be true. Okay, so then let me ask you a question. What 
having you're having said that, what comes first, a thought or a feeling? Well, it's interchangeable. I mean, thoughts actually do create feelings, but it, it works the other way as well. Uh, it's sort of like a, a closed loop communication system taking place. But I can say this, that thoughts don't have much power without emotional support. It's emotions that really give thought their power. Uh, you can have a feeling of frustration, no big deal, but you add emotion to that frustration, you get anger. And it works the other way as well. You have a feeling of kindness, but add that emotion to it, that emotional energy, and it becomes compassion. So to me, emotion is everything. There's a river of emotion running under every thought we have. And depending upon that, that river of emotion, the, the state of that, of, that, uh, of that river, so to speak, that has a lot to do with, with how we think and the perceptions that we have and the feelings you know, are, are, are a central part of that whole process. Okay. And your position with HeartMath again? Uh, executive, Vice President, and I'm also co-author of a book called The HeartMath Solution. Okay, so we'll get onto the book in a moment. So what is it that you do then? In well, I'm in, uh, in charge of what's called strategic development, mm -hmm. which has a lot to do with all the licensing of our intellectual property, uh, setting up operations in different parts of the world as well as domestically in the United States. I also oversee all the marketing activities at HeartMath from an executive position, and I'm also in charge of all new product development. So I have multiple roles, keeps me pretty busy, keeps me off the street, <laughs> and uh, a lot to do there. Uh, but I think, you know, in the expansion of HeartMath now, uh, HeartMath started with one man's idea and a small group of people who believed in that idea. And today we're uh, an international global company. Uh, and it's been quite a journey, quite a, an interesting process for me. This, this whole experience has been, you know, nothing short of phenomenal. Okay, well then let's get a bit into your personal journey as to how you met the doc and then where that took you. From what you said to me, a fairly normal childhood, mum, dad, a sibling, went through college, and what was your great passion? My great passion was music. Yeah. <laughs> I started playing drums at a very early age. Actually, I started playing when I was nine years old, but uh, at age seven, you know, I determined that's what I wanted to do, and I was beating up on the furniture, so my parents finally got me a drum. <laughs> <laughs> and so it started early as music was my passion. It was what I really wanted to do. It's what I thought I would always do. Mm -hmm. So you started playing in bands, writing music. Can you tell a little bit about that 10 odd years of your, your life? Yeah, well, I went, to, went through college and you know, did what I had to do there to, to um, sort of fulfill the family obligations and to you know, get an education, which everyone felt that you, you had to have back then. It was very important for your success, and I believe that could be true for many people today. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, in, in college, I was actually playing with bands that were professionals. And uh, as soon as I got out of college, I went immediately into a career as a professional musician. And it was during the 70s. It was a, a really interesting era in music. It was a golden era in many ways of music, the late 60s, early 70s. and. Uh, I played in lots of different bands, had lots of experience, um, you know, uh, played everything from the smallest, worst looking clubs you've ever seen in your life to major coliseums, and had just a, an unbelievable experience at creating and, and playing music for all those years. And it was something I'll, I'll, I look back on with great fond memories. I'm glad that I didn't only do that with my life, but I have no regrets about what I did. It's helped shape who I am today and it was a phenomenal learning experience. And what sort of music? Mostly rock music. The early years I was into R&B, rhythm and blues. I was infatuated with that. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was uh, about 15 years old and my first concert was the Beach Boys and I went to see the Beach Boys and I remember walking away going, you know, that was okay, you know, but it didn't really move me. And then a friend of mine said, you need to come with me next week. This guy, James Brown's coming to town. And I went to a James Brown concert, and it was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. The energy, the whole vibe of it, it was just amazing. And then I walked out of there a changed, changed person.